Roy Hodgson has spoken about his time as a club manager, and obviously now as England manager. He says he understands, as a club manager, why he would send players away during an international break for a bit of a, a rest and what have you. But he says it undermines club managers doing that, kind of undermines his job as, as England manager. What do you think of that? No, if we were sending the players away, it wasn't. We wouldn't be sending international players away. We're only sending away the players who are not on international duty, yeah, because we can't do that, and uh, we don't. But uh, I don't think there's any harm in the if the managers want to take the players away to the to the warm weather and train somewhere else. And I don't actually think that's the way Roy's putting it. I think Roy's claiming that if it's international players, and the way you've put it to me, it's actually that it's uh, me taking away my players, for example. It, when they should be on international duty. We'd only take the ones away who aren't on international duty. Yeah, I mean, what you said it concerns him that we're guilty of accepting at the international break so we can give the player 10 days off or, or go to Dubai. I, I don't know whether he, mm -hmm. he thinks it's it kind of undermines... The, the international player might think, well, they're getting a, a break while we're still here slugging our nuts out. Or... Well, what, do we keep the players and just keep them at the training ground every day? So we have to keep varying it. We keep trying to keep the players as fresh as we possibly can. It's actually quite difficult when you have a few players left over uh, in the international period because you know you have to keep working them and making sure and keeping them fresh as well. And So that's why quite often you might give them a bit of time off or you might take them away. Or you tend to find the managers do a mixture of both. Is it, what are the benefits of them getting away for a sunshine break as well? Is it health? Is it feel good factor? In the vitamin D has yeah, been said yeah. before, hasn't it? Yeah, what's the benefit for them to go on holiday? Just like you, you know, the journalists and... All the people who are standing behind the cameras just now, I'm sure they would all enjoy a holiday as well and a break, just like any players do as well. Uh, Dave, what are your thoughts on Phil Neville now? We know that he is leaving the club at the end of the season. Uh, oh, I, I've said said it quite a lot about Phil Neville over the years. He's a, he's been a he's been great for for Everton. He's been a terrific player and captain, someone who we'll greatly miss because his influence around the club is uh, is really special and it, he's helped me an awful lot in my job. <coughs> uh, you know and. You know, if he if he wants to stay and be part of the staff, there'll definitely be a place there for him if he wants to do that. And uh, I'm sure he'll have a he'll have a, a big future in coaching and management when he thinks his time's right. Is it something that comes down to him wanting to prolong his playing career? As well? Yeah, I think he wants to try and play play a bit longer. But you know, I think I think Phil knows you know where his limitations are as well. And uh, but he's a he's a really honest boy, and he knows when. He feels if he's not been at it, that he's maybe stepped below the, the level below what he's been been at. He's the first one to come out and admit that. So uh, we're all disappointed he's leaving, but uh, you know I, I obviously accept and respect his decision. When you talk about the influence that he, he has about the place, do you think you're better equipped to kind of cope without it now that the likes of Jagielka and Baines maybe mm -hmm. stepping up and taking on that kind of influence in the dressing room? Well, it happens at all clubs all the time. You know, where somebody comes and you move on, and somebody leaves. You know. But I remember, you no, know, it was it was sort of Phil Neville and Tim Cahill, and you know those sort of players were round the place. You no, know, that all comes to an end. You know, the teams continue to evolve. You know, we're actually probably in a, a period where Everton, where we are, on the verge of having to start rebuilding a new team. That's the, the way forward. And obviously, with Phil Neville going, that's one of the big big pieces of the jigsaw which we'll leave. So, uh, obviously, it's something we need to we need to try and do in the future. Is the plan for Phil Jagielka to take on the role of as? Yeah, yeah, he's been he's been captain when Phil Neville's out of the team, and uh, uh, his his play Phil Jagielka has been excellent. His performances have merited it, and uh, you know, but he's got a big act to follow as a captain, is Phil Neville, because Phil Neville, you no, know, off the field is is terrific for the players. How tricky are games against the likes of QPR at home compared to the likes of Spurs or Arsenal away when? Now you're expected to, to go on and win those games. All games in the Premier League are tricky. I've not, I've not found any any one of them which isn't. You no, know, difficult for different reasons. You know, we had a really hard game at Tottenham last week, which we, I thought we we done well in. You know, a couple of weeks ago we had Man City at home. You know, we've had Stoke City at home, where we've never really had a great record against them. So, uh, you know, QPR is no different. It's it's got its own level of difficulty. Uh, you know, if you're not quite at it, then you can get turned over. Uh, but we are we are nearer the top end of the league and they're nearer the bottom end of the league, so there's a reason for that and we need to try and show it in the game.